The dilapidated building was heavily surrounded by zombies. The only way to enter was to clear out the tunnel. Alicia, who was resting on the side, also made contact with the little girl, confirming she had indeed entered the building. Without hesitation, Alicia took out her pistol, its magazine empty as a shadow. However, she still had one last bullet around her neck, kept for suicide, ready to face death at any moment. A few minutes later, Luciana informed Alicia that the tunnel was cleared, and they could start entering, but Alicia refused their kindness, preparing to go in alone. Her close friends all began to object. They all knew Alicia was physically weak. Gratefully, Alicia said, you all need to return to the beach and prepare to leave. If I really find Padre, I'll find a way to let you know. Alicia was aware these people had their own concerns and didn't need to risk their lives with her. Dwight needed to look after his wife. Sarah had just reunited with her brother. Daniel needed to accompany Charlie to the end. Arnold's men relied on Luciana's leadership. Naomi was needed by everyone. Seeing Alicia's determination, they no longer protested and simply told her they would wait for her at the beach. Without further hesitation, Alicia entered the tunnel. When she reached the first floor, the fire was still burning, but thankfully, the zombies in the corridor were blocked by a collapse. Alicia continued along the staircase, her face pale and drenched in sweat. She weakly called for the girl but received no response. Alicia could only continue dragging her heavy steps forward. When she reached the third floor, she finally heard the girl's reply. The girl said she was already at the rooftop and needed Alicia's help. Alicia, extremely weak by then, was barely clinging to her belief. Looking up at the remaining stairs, the short three floors seemed as arduous as an endless journey. Thirty minutes later, Alicia finally reached the rooftop. Achieving it through sheer will, the sight on the rooftop came into view. Over here. You're alive. Seeing the girl safe, Alicia breathed a sigh of relief. Then she said to the girl, I don't want to die. At least not yet. Let's hurry and find your friends. Fortunately, the transmitter was still there, but when Alicia took it down, she was shocked to find it charred and damaged. The glimmer of hope she had just seen was once again stifled in its cradle. The desire to find Padre was shattered again. The girl, however, did not show a negative attitude. She said my friend is not outside but inside the building. Alicia sensed something was amiss and asked what her friend's name was. He's not out there. Struck hard by the girl's answer, Alicia's mind was again flooded with Victor's voice. The girl had lured her here for Victor. Sorry, I was God. trying to save your life! No, 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 no! It doesn't make any sense! Alicia. Thinking this, Alicia was about to head downstairs to return to the beach. Luciana and the others were right. She shouldn't have come here. We need to help him. Why? Because he's your family. You don't know what he's capable of. I know everything you do. He can save you. He can save us. No! Alicia began to doubtfully ask, have you really been bitten? Do you really know where Padre is? Is there any truth in what you've told me? The girl finally asked Alicia, would you rather die than save him? Alicia collapsed on the floor, locking eyes with the girl. Then she asked why the girl cared so much about Victor. The girl said, I am doing this for you. Alicia passed out again. When she next opened her eyes, the girl was gone. She then arrived at the sixth floor, at Victor's apartment. Once again, Alicia saw the little bird, as if guiding her forward. The place was now filled with smoke. Victor lay on the bed, lost in a drunken stupor, mistaking Alicia's voice for a hallucination. Alicia sat on the sofa and told him this was no illusion. Victor finally perked up, urging Alicia to leave quickly. Alicia responded helplessly. I can't do it anymore. I feel like my life has come to an end. Victor, with sorrow, said, I'm sorry, Alicia. I wanted to give you everything, but in Alicia's eyes, Victor had not given her anything but rather taken everything from her. Not just because Victor had killed Will, but because too many people had died for Alicia, including her mother, Madison. Her mother's wish was to build a place to help others. Alicia wanted to fulfill her mother's wish, but every time she was about to succeed, Victor would ruin it. However, thinking again, since she was about to die, none of it mattered anymore. I'm so sorry, Alicia. Alicia used all her strength to load her pistol. Victor knew what she was planning. <sighs> don't, 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 don't do that. Alicia was in extreme sorrow, not to accompany Victor in death, but to find her own release. She felt too tired, constantly battling the infection in her body, her spirit crushed by repeated dashed hopes. 
Perhaps death was indeed a release. She felt particularly sorry for those who had died for her and disappointed many who had expectations of her. But she was just too tired. Overwhelmed by reality. Yet, as Alicia was about to pull the trigger, an image of her mother Madison appeared in her mind. Tearful as if pained for her daughter. At that moment, the little bird appeared again, wanting to escape through the window. Alicia also hoped the bird could leave, giving her a sense of release, as if she was the bird unwilling to be trapped. In the end, Alicia put down the gun. There are certain things you always remember about your kids. And my daughter, she just decided that, that bird was going to live. Then she walked to the window and gently lifted the little bird. She lived because my kids didn't give up on her. As a child, her brother and she saved a little bird and named it Amina. Alicia thought that perhaps the last thing she would do in her life was to help the little bird escape its trap. But Alicia was too weak to break the window. No matter how many times she knocked, there was no response. At that moment, the little girl appeared again and broke the window. They looked at each other for a few seconds before sending the bird out the window and watching it fly into the sky. Alicia asked her why she came back. And the girl took off her mask and said it was because she didn't want to leave her behind. Alicia couldn't believe it. She didn't understand what was happening. The girl looked just like Alicia when she was young. That sunny and positive little girl. It turned out that all of this was really just her hallucination. But Alicia still asked why she was guided here. The girl replies that deep down you know what it is. And the tapes your mother left behind tell you why. The girl went on to say that what you just said to Victor was wrong. Their mother's death wasn't to let her build these survival bases. She chose to sacrifice herself to let you live better. The girl showed her arm again and said that she was really bitten and had indeed survived. Living on in your heart. You have to try to get everyone out. But Alicia knew her physical condition was too weak to leave. The girl shook her head and said that as long as you ensure that others remember this part of you, you will not die. Alicia didn't quite understand what that meant. The girl turned to look at Victor. She wanted Alicia to remember her original intention. As long as she didn't forget her initial heart, she wouldn't die. If she really didn't save even Victor, perhaps she would truly be dead. A reminder, the little girl is actually a projection from deep within Alicia's heart. Representing her survival instinct and her original intentions, everyone has a chance to be saved. Subconsciously, Alicia wants to overcome the infection and survive. And she wants Victor to live too. But she isn't aware of these feelings. So she fantasizes about her younger self leading her to do the right thing. To escape the impending radioactive dust. Everyone prepares to flee by boat. They look at the thick fog in the distance with worried expressions because Alicia hasn't arrived yet. Naomi comes over to remind them that everyone is ready and it's time to leave. Luciana wants to wait a bit longer. But at this moment, the greater good must prevail. Everyone, we're shoving off! Hearing Luciana's order, there's a sense of melancholy among the people, as Alicia's absence is a lingering regret. But at that moment, others seem to see a glimmer of hope. Hey, Pete, we need help. Alicia, where are you? Alicia weakly says she's in the armored vehicle and can't move anymore. And of course, she's brought Victor along. Victor has never had real friends in his life. He only considered Madison's family as his own, because they never gave up on him when he fell into the abyss. When Alicia wakes up again, she's already on the beach. Grace says the readings are going up. The zombie horde must be burning now, and they need to leave quickly. Alicia hurriedly asks if there's any news of Morgan. Grace explains that they've made contact with him. He hasn't reached shore yet, but there's no radiation where he is. Grace then hands the walkie-talkie to Alicia to talk with Morgan. Soon, Morgan's voice comes through, and Alicia says she's sorry for letting him down. Morgan says that everyone being alive is what's most important, and he also feels that what she said might be right. He's received some information on the radio, possibly about Padre. Maybe it really exists, and they need to find it. Alicia is also a bit excited inside, as she was the only one who truly believed in Padre before. Then she tells Morgan that no matter what happens to her, he shouldn't fight alone. She doesn't want Morgan to carry everything like she does. Morgan understands that Alicia is worried about her condition and can only comfort her that it will get better. But soon the communication cuts off again. Time is pressing, and everyone is quickly preparing to leave. Charlie steps forward. Both sisters have become like this. They're both sorry for not being there when the other needed help the most. In season 4, Charlie's dream was to go to the beach once, and Alicia wanted to take her but got delayed. They exchange a farewell. Knowing that with so many boats, they might get lost along the way. Daniel also comes to say goodbye to Alicia. He says he wasn't with his daughter to the end, but he will always be by Charlie's side. I will see you again. 
Hearing Daniel's words, Alicia's tears can't be held back. Sherry and Dwight also thank Alicia, grateful for her accepting them initially. Alicia nods gently. Luciana also comes to say goodbye, saying if it weren't for needing to take care of them, she would be on Alicia's boat taking care of her, but Alicia refuses. She believes she could die at any moment and turn into a zombie, potentially harming others. Being alone is the safest option for her. At this moment, Victor, holding supplies, insists on accompanying Alicia even if it means being bitten by her as a zombie. Alicia firmly refuses and gets off the boat. Victor, realizing what she intends to do, shouts for her not to go. Alicia says she doesn't know how long it will be before she turns or how much longer she can live. Many people have heard her message and are heading to the building. She wants to stop them. You have to go. I'm not gonna go. You have to go. I'm not gonna go. You have to go. Finally, after much persuasion from Alicia, Victor reluctantly agrees to leave. Victor, I didn't just save you. So you could live to do what I couldn't. I did it because I love you too. The love Alicia speaks of is like the love for a family member. Will their journey be smooth? And can they find a sanctuary? Alicia eventually collapses on the beach again. When she wakes up, the sky is still clear, and the little bird is beside her. No boats are seen on the lake. She feels different now. No longer feverish. Just thirsty. The girl appears again. And Alicia doesn't understand why she's here again. The girl shows her arm. The scar is gone. And she asks Alicia how she feels now. Alicia takes a moment to feel her body, which hasn't felt this light in a long time. This episode is Alicia's self-redemption. The little girl and the bird are her hallucinations. Alicia verbally refuses to save Victor, but Victor has become an important part of her life. Like family, according to Alicia's original intention, everyone has a chance to be saved. Just like the little bird, if Alicia gives up on Victor, then she is no longer the real Alicia. The little girl can be seen as a manifestation of her innermost thoughts or as Alicia's original intention guiding her to do the right thing. As for how Alicia's infection suddenly improves, I believe that since Alicia was bitten by a zombie and started to have a fever, she's had a sense of self-despair. Coupled with her desire to complete what her mother didn't, the little girl rekindled her desire to live. Now that Alicia has let everything go, she has returned to being her true self. So her condition is slowly improving. That last bullet she saved for herself is no longer needed.